That's what happens when you seek out hallucinogenics. It's gonna allow everything else physically here to relax. The emotional stuff is gonna come out. Trauma's gonna come out. But afterwards, your atoms are gonna go back into their original positions. Why not? This is like psychotherapy, like, like psychedelic therapy. That's a legitimate thing. And I would recommend it if you're in a problematic situation. But why are you going to a goddamn shaman out in the middle of a forest? Named some fire Pete? Was that his name? I don't know. We're all connected. I believe when it. you get to a certain point of understanding inside your intellect mind, that connectivity you realize your hands are basically playing like USB ports. So these are the, uh, it's crazy to think that something that just grows out of the ground has so much power and I'm actually holding it in my hand right now. But here we go. Yeah, psilocybin tastes like garbage. <laughs> I want to like put it into a tea or something. They don't taste bad. Honestly, that doesn't taste too bad. You probably just eat too much food and you can't tell the difference. They taste awful. I don't know what you're talking about. They're pretty good and dry. Every, everybody just says kind of earthy. It tastes like dirt. Like, oh, like a, there's a slight rubberiness to very slight. But like, it's, it's so hard to, dis it's like such a weird, I'm not gonna go into detail. Stim and all. Oh, the whole thing, yeah, yeah. Okay. Welcome to the club. May God bless you and be with you on your journey. Feel the, feel the incense. Okay, so I think we've been about 20 minutes in. About 15, yeah. About 15. So we're about 15 minutes in and I started to feel things are kind of wavy and kind of disconnected. It's kind of like my brain works on multiple channels and like I have to pick and choose what I'm concentrating on. Excellent way of describing it. Good. Sh so you are aware. You just are selectively aware. That's ex <coughs> what you did just then <clears throat> was self-reflection. It was quantifying the state that you're in, what you experience, what you're feeling. Apply that to other shit. Apply that to your life, your, your procedure, your activities, your, your schedule, the way, the, the way you view the world, everything. And you will, like, that's how you improve. You acknowledge, then you act upon. I don't know what to, like, I don't know what to say about you, dude. Like, you're cle you clearly are, you have a degree of intelligence which means there's even less of an excuse for you to be in this situation that you are in. I have never been involved. I have no clue where the fuck I am or even who I am. And I don't give a fuck. I recognize oh, He's about to experience the second part of the realization of letting go. And we're gonna get to the other side of it. <laughs> Yeah, he's just he figured out how to let go. <laughs> We're gonna make our way through this journey. <laughs> he's gonna get to the other side of it. I told you they'd come. It's gonna get nice and bright in about five more minutes. Yeah. And the reflection in the water is really cool too. So what do you think was the first trauma that you experienced which, you had, which basically set up like a defense mechanism for you? Man. Yeah, my parents are just crazy. They're broken people. Parents? Yeah. Stewards. People who are like trying to, to, to... Oh, okay. Okay. It's, pr it's pretty nice, isn't it? <laughs> yep. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? What? Like, they don't, I mean, that shit doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. You just summed up shrooms and juice. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Remember when I <clears throat> tried, I was sitting in my apartment. There was sort of like a, there's the hallway. It was dark. All the shades were down. The sun was going down. 
was tripping. I was looking through. I, there was like a hallway, a dark hallway, which just led to darkness. And in my mind, I saw that, and I sort of like pictured like the void, right? Sort of like the finality of things, like death. Like going through that would be the end of it. And I was able to look at that, well, you know, on the influence, and I was okay. Like I, I looked right down the void, and I was just like, I'm okay with this, with things, the way that things are, the way that, that was the experience that I had. I, that's. That was the dumbest Oh, and it happened so long ago. <laughs> like, I've just been waiting for the right time to just drop that shit. So, uh, when did you feel the need of this separate personality? Is that what, was that like what you used as a coping mechanism to socialize with? Out of everything we've seen in this video, like, right, what we're seeing right here, like, I, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> this is a good thing we're witnessing. Self and like reflection, like he's doing stuff in a, in a calm, peaceful environment. He's just contemplating things in a way that he can't really do it I, I, without the drugs, sure. But I mean, this type of introspection is good. Am I using that word right? It's good. But remember, it means nothing if you don't the next day follow through with it. Oh, well, that's exactly what it is, right? Like, I didn't know what the hell, I didn't know how to communicate what I was dealing with or what I was going through, and I just... Right, we put on these different faces in order to deal with situations in society. You try to give people what the hell they want. And then you felt like that was the need to make up Francis or other personalities? Yeah. Are you ready to let all that go? Yeah, please, man. Oh my God. This is the first time I've ever felt happiness. I wait, wait, know. wait, what? Happiness. <laughs> I, this is the first time I felt it. That's what psychedelics do. You kind of feel like a warmth. Like you're just okay with everything. You just want to give affection. It's just drugs, man. <laughs> it's a game, right? <laughs> just let them go, so it's man. up to you to choose. Steven, are you, can you get up? Hello? Mm -hmm. That's actually kind of scary. Jesus. You're not dead, are you? Fuck. Mm. <sighs> I'm still not sure I'm like really here yet. <sighs> Another immediately. You wake up and you start drinking soda again. The sec, that's the first thing you did. Remove your respirator. Get that dew in them, in, that, in them loins. Yeah. I don't really want breakfast. That's just, that's a change. It's just all bullshit. Like, none of this matters. None of it. It's all a construct. It's all a simulation. It's all a... It's a fucking video game. You know what? You got the first part right. But, no. It is very much real life. Uh, it's, it doesn't matter, but it's real. Um, yeah. No. Uh... The universe is simply here as a matter of happenstance, and our existence is very much the same. We find ourselves as feeling, emotional creatures in a callously indifferent environment where we have to derive meaning, despite there being objectively no meaning in the universe. That's something we make up. It's, it's not fake, it's real, right? The things that people feel, like the things that happen are real, the things that people feel are real to them, but none of it matters. Anything goes, anything happens, anything usually does happen. And you'll realize pretty soon that there is also a cost to meaning, despite it being sort of a intrinsic necessity to life. <laughs> because with everything that you find important, right, everything that comes to needs to go, right? It's really messed up, man. Life is really, really fucked up. And I, I like, there are not words to, to quantify how grotesque reality is. However bad you think it is, it is considerably worse.
way worse in a way that we can't even comprehend, right? The only thing that's real to us is what we experience for the most part. Everything else is sort of by proxy if it's not directly happening to us. You know when you die, I think I died last night. I physically, my body was fine, but I think I went back into the void we come from and I think, uh, I think I'm still in it, except I'm also in this physical corporal body, but I'm also the incorporeal being that puppets it and controls it and God damn it, I feel like I'm in control. I feel like I'm in control of myself for the first fucking time. Yeah, shrooms are heavy, dude. Actually, I had some and I made the excellent decision to watch a Black Mirror episode. <laughs> and I hadn't watched it, but I hadn't seen that at that time. I saw the Christmas special episode. It fucked me up. Man. Sitting just cradled in my bed for like, for like an hour trying to calm myself down. Just like, <laughs> it wasn't real. That's kind of how it went. The stuff that I, I normally worry about, like worrying about my finances, worrying about my internet, worrying about what people think about me, it's all so incredibly stupid. It's all just bullshit. I think I'm going to enjoy making YouTube videos again. I think I'm going to enjoy live streaming again. Try to enjoy going to the gym. Hmm, I'm not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? We need. Don't disagree with me on that, Alexa. Alexa, go to the gym. It just, it's like, no, I disagree. <laughs> What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Boogie298 coming at your lobby. Alexa, you dare disobey me? Go to the gym. Sorry, I don't know that one. Get to the power. When I make a video, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 people watch. That is still my dream job. Everybody falls off. That's part of the deal. On a channel that makes, say if you upload twice a week and you get 25,000, right? Or 25,000 views per video, right? Two videos each week, 200,000 views in a single month. Right there, that's over, it's like, a, it's over like a thousand dollars in terms of ad revenue on what you've made, right? Excluding other means of monetizing your content, which you are, can absolutely do, especially with your brand. Are you kidding me? Dude, like, turn, put on that business hat. You will very easily be, you're in a, you're already in a very, in a very nice position, all right? He had tons and tons he, of You start He's off as a nobody, and for a short yeah. period of time, you're a somebody, and then that star burns out like every star does. I was lucky enough to get hit by lightning. I was lucky enough to get to live my dream. That essentially summarizes his mindset. This stuff happened to me. I got lucky that I got put in this position to do these things. Oh man, that was you. You brought yourself up, you brought yourself down. I'll be gone one day too. But for one brief moment, we, we got an opportunity to shine really bright. Excellent documentary. Very good. Honestly. Mike Klum, seriously. Like, if you do more of this, I will very much be nearby to, to check out anything that you make next. Very good. And this is the first thing on the cha on this on this website that you got, right? Now, final thoughts about Boogie, I guess. Nothing that, for the most part, hasn't already been acknowledged. Uh, you can alter the, the trajectory of things, right? You don't have full input in how life plays out, but you can alter a few, you know, specific variables to hedge your bets the best that you can. Now you always need to, in my opinion, always work towards different ways to be able to have the most input on those variables, let's just say. This is an example of someone who felt like they just didn't have any there's nothing they could have done and everything was entirely reactionary. I want you to know 
that's not true. You, and if, if what he's saying is true, which it's not, it's everyone's screwed, right? But what I'm saying, you have a chance. You have a, you have a chance to be able to try to get to this place or this thing in your mind if you have an image or whatever, to be able to try to manifest it within tan tangible reality. And there are specific, now, as to how, like, that's all just, I'm still figuring that out, right? I have this idea of what I think I, what I want my life to be in my head, and I'm trying my absolute hardest to hedge my bets in the right way to be able to enable that for myself, right? Clearly, my priorities have not necessarily been in the right place if I'm still where, I'm, where I am. But one thing he did say is, right, it's a game. Life is a video game. Not in the simulation sense, but in the terms of like, there's progress, there's, you start out with a character with a bunch of attributes, you gotta go through a bunch of trials and tests, things that happen. You take damage, you, you, you give damage, and you just experience until it's over. So there is some solace to be derived from the slight degree of control you have over the outcome of circumstance. But for the most part, it is circumstance. If you ever see this boogie, I wish you nothing but the best. I want you to do better. You don't seem like a bad person. You just seem like you're incredibly emotionally unintelligent. And you kind of just lie to yourself and say that there's nothing you can do. <clears throat> but you aren't... Granted, a lot of your health stuff is probably irreversible in a lot of ways. But you still have a chance to be able to turn things around. It's never too late. Never too late to improve, never too late to start something, never too late to make progress. You wanna know what's when it's too late? When you're dead. But that's the cool thing about death, you won't even notice it. You're too busy being dead, not existing. Well, until next time.